Hey everyone, welcome to my first video. I decided to start a YouTube channel to keep myself occupied and not focus on the constant pandemic news that's plastered everywhere. So I hope you all enjoy. My channel will be focused basically on lifestyle in general, from travel to Disney, to missing persons and true crime, to maybe even some paranormal things. Uh, really just whatever I find interesting and I plan to share it with you guys. Uh, hopefully you find it interesting too and it'll distract you a little bit from the constant pandemic news and being stuck inside all the time. So without further ado, let's get into today's topic, which is the strange disappearance of Lars Mittank. Lars was born on February 19th, 1986 in Germany and was 28 years old when he went missing in Varna, Bulgaria. He and a group of friends had traveled to Golden Sands, which is a resort town about 20 kilometers away from Varna, on June 30th, 2014. Everything seemed to be going well, and they were just enjoying their vacation until July 6th. On the 6th, while either at the beach or at a McDonald's, some reports, um, they're kind of conflicted on exactly where this happened, um, but the story is the same. Lars, who is a fan of the German football club Werder Bremen, got in a fight with a group of men who were fans of Bayern Munich, which is another team, and was punched very badly in the head. After the fight, he and his friends went to a bar to cool off a little bit, and while his friends went inside, Lars decided to remain outside and wouldn't say why. When his friends went out to find him, he had actually disappeared for the first time. The next morning, he met back up with his friends and told them that a group of Russians were hired to beat him up the night before. His friends didn't really believe him, um, as there wasn't really anything to back up this story. Uh, there was no evidence behind it. He had just kind of told them that a group of Russians had come and taken him away and beaten him up. But his friends decided to take him to the doctor because of the supposedly two fights he had now gotten into. And while at the doctor, it was determined that Lars was actually hit so hard that he had suffered a ruptured eardrum. Because of this, the doctor recommended that he not fly and prescribed him 500 milligrams of the antibiotic cefiroxin. Lars explained to his friends that he couldn't fly home to Germany and told them that they should go without him and he would come when he's well enough to fly. His friends weren't fully on board with this idea, but he insisted and eventually they decided to leave. His friends said that when they left, Lars was relaxed and in a good mood. That night, Lars checked into a hotel called the Hotel Color in Varna, which is a hostel in a somewhat sketchy part of town. Um, I looked up the hotel and it's really cheap, um, like you can get a room for about $16 a night. So it wasn't exactly the nicest place he could stay, but I mean his friends were out of town and he really just needed a place to stay for the night and just kind of rest up until his ear got better. So. Um, he probably wasn't looking for the Ritz-Carlton, he probably just needed somewhere to sleep. Well, while he was at the hotel, the CCTV footage shows that he started acting kind of paranoid and erratic, pacing up and down the foyer and even hiding in the elevator at times, which this type of behavior reminds me a lot of the Elisa Lam case, which is an unsolved murder in Los Angeles where the victim also started acting really bizarre right before she disappeared. If you all would like a video on that case, um, feel free to let me know down in the comments and I can um, totally make one of those too. Anyway, Lars eventually called his mother Sandra in a panic saying that there were four men following him wanting to kill him and asked her to cancel all of his credit cards. He also asked her if she knew anything about the antibiotics he had been given. Regarding this call, Sandra said that, I thought, God, my son is in danger. I could hear his heart pounding over the phone and he said that people were trying to rob him or kill him. And if this isn't strange enough, the hotel's CCTV captured footage of Lars leaving the hotel around 1 a.m. and returning sometime later. No one knows where he went during that time though. The next morning, he decided that he was going to fly home and headed to the Varna airport. Uh, once he was there, he went to check in with the airport doctor, Dr. Kosta Kostov, who reported that Lars was acting normal until a man dressed in a construction worker's uniform walked into the office. Once this man walked in, Lars started shaking and said, I don't want to die here, I want to get out of here, before jumping up and running out of the airport. And here is the last footage we have of Lars Matank.
Lars has now been missing for almost six years. So let's dive into some theories as to what caused Lars to just run off and never be seen again. The first theory we have is mental illness. A lot of people think that Lars may have been suffering from mental illness. Maybe he was schizophrenic. This could have contributed to him feeling like he was being followed or even hallucinating that Russians had beaten him up that night outside the bar. However, his family said that neither he nor anyone else in the family had any history of mental illness. He was also 28 and schizophrenia rarely shows up that late. So if he had some form of schizophrenia, it most likely would have shown up earlier. The second theory is a concussion. It's also possible that Lars suffered one after being punched in the head during the original fight he had gotten into. If someone had punched him hard enough to rupture his eardrum, it would definitely be hard enough to give him a concussion. And symptoms of concussions include mental confusion and disorientation. And we're constantly learning more and more about how concussions can affect people, that it's plausible to think that Lars could have suffered from one. Another theory are the antibiotics that he was prescribed. Could those antibiotics, which was a uh, cefiroxime, um, could that contribute to him having hallucinations and acting erratically? It's possible, but mental impairment isn't listed as a common side effect for cefiroxime. That being said, everyone has different body chemistry and reacts to medication differently, and dizziness and drowsiness are both listed as side effects, so it still may have affected him in a negative way. The last theory I'll talk about is uh, maybe he was really being chased. I mean, maybe while on vacation, Lars had gotten involved with the wrong group of people, um, and maybe they did stalk him the rest of the time while he was in Bulgaria. Really, the only thing this theory goes off is Lars claiming himself to be followed and fearing for his life. Even in the footage, we don't really see anyone chasing after him as he rushes out of the airport. That being said, it's definitely a possibility that people were after him, and if they caught up with him, that could explain why he's still missing. So, let's look at some reports of Lars being found. There have been a couple of reports of people seeing Lars after he went missing, but unfortunately, none of them have led to any breakthroughs. First, in 2015, a truck driver had claimed that he saw Lars on the side of the road and offered him a ride, but unfortunately, nothing came out of this tip. Then, in December 2016, Brazilian police found a disheveled and confused-looking man wandering the streets of Porto Velho. Uh, once this man's photo was shared on social media, people started to speculate that it was Lars Matank, based on the similarities and features, which you guys can see, there are definitely some similar features. However, this man actually turned out to be Anton Pilipa, a Canadian humanitarian worker who had gone missing five years prior. Then in September 2017, a user posted on Reddit that they ran into a homeless looking man that resembled Lars Matank in Canada, and that he had asked them in German if there was a phone anywhere nearby. The Reddit user states that they thought Lars was asking to use their phone and they refused, but later attempted to contact the Facebook tip page set up for Lars. Unfortunately, nothing came out of this alleged sighting either. Personally, I don't know how much credence to put into this sighting. I mean, if someone I thought looked exactly like Lars and he was disheveled and was speaking to me in German, asking me questions. I think I would call the police or at least take a picture of them and share it with the Facebook tip page rather than just dismiss it and then post on Reddit a while later after seeing him. But that being said, if you or anyone you know has seen or thinks they've seen Lars, I'm putting a link to the Facebook page below. I think it's definitely a possibility that Lars is still out there. I mean. Look at Anton Pilippa. He went missing in Canada and was able to hitchhike and walk his way down to Brazil without any identification before being found five years later, which goes to show that people that go missing can definitely turn up alive much farther away from where they disappeared. So thank you so much for watching and please give this video a thumbs up if you liked it and want to see more content like this. Comment below on what disappearance or true crime you'd like to see next, and please subscribe. Stay safe, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.